different, yes. but from another yes. perspective, it is beauty in its purest yes. form. And that sounds yeah. macabre, but if you look at it, I've been, I was looking at Alex Gray paintings yesterday. Uh-huh. Some of them are so gross and macabre and all these despicable sort of, you know, <laughs> bodies being torn asunder, you know, sure. but it's the flesh, it's the matter, and we, we all die. We all go to the toilet and take a shit, you know. <laughs> there is this dark side and aspect of reality, right? <laughs> But there is something yeah. beyond. Well, I don't think there's anything dark point. about taking a shit, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that maybe that points towards my uh, my my my, uh, my own personality. Yeah, it's just Freudian could uh, explain that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's uh, well, I mean, uh, Ben, uh, ideas, thoughts about this? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I have a feeling really that we we are uh, actually coming from very very um, similar perspectives. Um, you know, I'm sort of Jake is talking about um, a sort of a global, um, a kind of, you know, sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? A kind of, you know, sort of global breakdown, if you want to use that word, which has to um, um, sort of come before the awakening. And I, I, I totally understand that. And I, I see that I sense that Jake is coming from a sort of, as he said himself, a um, um, sort of Eastern um, sort of religious perspective. And I must be honest, I've never quite escaped my Christian um, indoctrination or conditioning, and I, I'm not ashamed of that fact. Well, sure. And so I'm, yeah. and so I'm coming to you as somebody really who has a a Christ um, a Christ um, complex, not in the same way that you know Mr. Shayla has a Christ complex. <laughs> you know, sure, I'm not. Yeah. Um, you know, mm. I'm not about to tell you that I am the truth, the way, and the life, because mm. uh, I ain't. But. Um, I mean, I tend to think that um, I tend to think that if it's going to happen anywhere, it's going to happen in my body, in the same way that it happened to to Christ, if you want to use that word, mm-hmm. or the Sun, or um, or it happened to that symbolic or metaphorical being there on the cross. And um, I must have absorbed that so deeply when I was a kid, and even indeed when I was a teenager, and, and later in life. Mm-hmm. That in some way, I believe that I will physically have to embody that, even if it does indeed mean. Um, and I hope it bloody doesn't, as I keep repeating. But even if it, uh, I mean, even if it does actually mean um, imprisonment or torture, um, or 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 some kind of you know um, sort of physical statement of intent, um, and I you know I desperately hope it doesn't. But I'm uh, but I am looking down at the future. You see, Henrik, mm-hmm. and I, I'm you know I'm looking ten, fifteen years in the future, and I'm saying, well, I think there's every chance it will. Is there every chance that it will? Well, exactly. I mean, we, we, that's that's one thing that we have as as humans. We can we can <laughs> look at a pattern of things and and we can see. Okay, you know, we can project trajectory or whatever, however you want to call it, that we can see where this is going. Uh, w- what I see also with such an idea or such a capability that we have is that that also gives us the capability of changing that. That gives us the, the ability to actually steer it away from where we see things are going. And and I guess what you're also saying here, Ben, is that you have an idea uh, that you're expressing that if it, it if, if things be, become so bad um, that you have to, you know, sacrifice your own life to in order to try to resist this and, and, and change it, uh, you will yes. do that, right? I am telling you now, on, on the record, uh, that I, yes, that is correct. Mm. Do you think that, yeah. you, I mean, you you a little bit connected it with your uh, background, your Christian background, religious background? Do you think that this is where it might, yeah. an idea yeah. like that ha- emanates from? Yeah, you know, um, sort of interesting thing, and, you know, I uh, sort of studied theology at Cambridge University, so I may have told you last time we were talking, so... You know, I'm, I am I am deeply um, sort of immersed in Christian theology. Um, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a, mm, necessarily a practicing um, Christian, but I will sure. tell you this: um, even spending one night in the cells, as I did last week, I very quickly started reconnecting with God. Believe you me. <laughs> <laughs> when well, that's a good thing, right? It's a great thing. Well, it's a and, there, thing. and there you have it. I mean, that's a beauty of because because if something as Precisely. bad as that were happening to you. But in that moment, you could find the most positive and wonderful, uh, spiritually uplifting thing. Oh, I found. Yeah, I, yes. I'm, I'm sorry. Go on, Henry. Go on. Yeah, I'm just going to say that w- that that spawns the idea that Jake is talking about. That that this yes. horrendous dark moment that we're experiencing and living in, that that kind of uh, that pushes us towards that edge, towards the you know yes. the uplifting side of things, the positive thing. You know. 
Yes, yes. It's just, I mean, I tend to always, um, excuse me while I belch, um, I just sort of, you know, I, um, I always um, sort of tend to regard um, Eastern philosophy as being unnecessarily, um, uh, I don't mean atheistic, but actually um, sort of aphysical. It seems to want to just, it seems to want to, um, um, uh, you know, um, sort of separate the, the, the you know, body from the mind. Now, this is great, but actually if we take the example of those um, sort of saffron-robed monks who burned themselves alive, Jake, who sat there in meditation, in bliss, no doubt, but they burned themselves alive in the 1960s, <laughs> actually protesting against the Vietnam War. Now, that, to me, um, is an example. You know, um, that, to me, is true conviction. Right. I mean, the Christ mythos is the Precisely. same story. He is yes. nailed onto the cross, yes. and because of the material restriction, and this is, I was recently listening to Eckhart, and I can't, recommend it more it's it's like one of my he's one of my favorite inspirations at this point but Eckerd was explaining how christ being nailed on the cross and that yeah. extreme material limitation right. being opposed imposed on his body is what he needs to be able to transcend mm. that is it's a right, metaphor yeah. for for being able to overcome the body yeah. and the pain and the blood yeah. and all that stuff and that it's a beautiful metaphor when it's correctly understood but it's a Obviously, it's a it's a mental prison when it becomes dogma, and uh, also, I mean, we could, religion is another thing, obviously, but <laughs> it's another, <laughs> another another entire um, uh, interview. Sure. But um, sure. but but uh, the original, in my view, at least, Gnostic or Egyptian roots mm. of the Christian religion Re- is yeah. very much more akin to what the Eastern people are into than uh, what it has become under the more materialist. Western mm. mind, so yeah. I, I think it's from you know we're back. At <laughs> I think that I, I think, think it comes full circle that's... in the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm sure you're right, Jake, about that. Um, but again, you seem to be um, you're sort of abstracting it, and I, I just um, I just want to know. I don't know why I want to know. I'm pressing you on it for just for my own sake. But I just yeah. wonder whether you would be willing um, to actually make that sacrifice yourself for what you believe in. Would I personally sacrifice my body on a on a cross? <laughs> you asking me would I well, martyr not, myself? That's I'm not on a, you know obviously not. I would hope on a cross, but I'm talking about <laughs> right, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this new world order and everything that it entails. Would I, would I, would I be allowed myself to be tortured or um, no. well, taken I to mean, prison I, or something for my conviction? You know, you, well, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, prison for example. Okay, um, I can only say that I, I will do in the moment what seems to be the best thing to do in the moment because I don't know what the context will be when this arises. Sure. Saying yes or no to anything is a, is just too simple and it's like, I don't know, it's, it's a trick. You're trying to trick me into saying something. I have I'm no not, idea. I'm not trying to trick you too. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe um, that's just um, my perception. I, I don't is. know. I feel like uh, I, I always surrender to the now. That's what I'm yeah. trying to do. I'm trying to surrender to the now and yeah. to live in accordance with the context of the now. It's like, if, if, if I'm standing in a row, and I'm about to be chipped, you know, yeah. and it seems to me like a big joke, and right. I will, I'll be right in front, and I'll say, chip me, because I'm not afraid of these people. And if I decide, if, if the context <sighs> feels wrong, I will <laughs> oppose it with Molotov cocktails. It depends on the context of the now. Yeah. I can't say what I will yeah. do, because I don't feel like I am a individual with, yeah. with a, a cut off brain or a, yeah. you know yeah. it's like yeah. it's too complex like I don't know it is whether, complex you know like having to you know there's all these you can think up so many horrible scenarios where you will be tested in you know will you react in this way or will you react in that way yeah. I don't know yeah. I don't, it's extremely I like complex hopefully we'll just transcend all these limitations and just go yeah. beyond yeah well I'm sure yeah I totally, I do agree with you. All I would say is that the Jews 60 years ago also would have hoped that they would have transcended, and yet they did have to make that decision. It became very, very real indeed. And it, of course it wasn't exclusively them. It was, it was other groups as well. Uh, but all I'm trying to say by that is that this thing which we're talking about is more than a game. It's real. It, it happened for the last time um, in a monstrous, um, in an utterly monstrous way, less or slightly over 60 years ago, but you know what I'm talking about. It happened then. That's 60 right. years ago in human consciousness. What is that? That's, a, that's, that's 
um, you know, sort of less than a blink of an eyelid, isn't it? <laughs> the, the question then also is, uh, I guess, that, you know, hopefully we have learned from that, you know, and, and, and our, I'm not saying that I'm justifying that again as this kind of a, a sacrifice or whatever, but whatever happened then happened, and, and we, uh, we three that sit here at least have, have w- weren't around at that time, but that, you know, that still um, gives us the opportunity to learn from it, from the experience, from the history, and, 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 and say, yeah. you know, no matter where or, you know, what people are being, uh, you know, exterminated in, in, in you know, right. for whatever reasons, we we can view, we can look upon that now and say, okay, fuck this, we're not going to, you know, do this again because we, we, we've learned from history. And, yes, and, precisely. And, and that, uh, you know, that event that happened... Uh, that gives us the opportunity to actually make it, you know, from not happening again, and, uh, and hopefully we're we're so in contact contact enough with our history, and we, and and we we learn and we study, so we can uh, prevent it. You know, that's 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 what I have to say about that. I guess. Sure. I sure. think we're already yeah. doing that. In 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 my, and I don't know. Maybe it's because I I, I live in a bubble. I'm surrounded by. <laughs> The blogs that I find entertaining, the music that I find entertaining. So yeah. maybe I don't have a completely, you know, wide perspective about what's happening out there. But I almost feel like that 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 doesn't matter anymore. But uh, mm. what I what I what I feel is from from my personal interaction with uh, with the universe is that things like Facebook, things like YouTube, is spreading the message of awareness of each other, which is a simple thing. You know, it's a very basic thing. Being yeah. aware of this person's tape of a cat falling in a toilet or singing the newest pop song in their room or something like that is being having a connection with that person. Even if it seems trivial and crap and crass, people are becoming aware of each other on a, in a massive level. I mean, there's many countries that don't have high-speed internet connections, sure. and there's, th- this is all f- going to change very fast, and we're just going to become aware. It'll be like having a part yeah. of your body cut off to see a war, because you can have people blogging about it that you know. Yeah. You can have your Facebook friends saying, look yeah. at this horrible photo of what just happened yeah. to my living room, a bomb fell in it, or something <laughs> visceral. You can feel it. And this yeah. is what's becoming. We're becoming aware of these things. And I think yeah. we can actually literally prevent them. And actually, because it's not well, you know, abstract and far and distant. It's mm. here. It's now. Oh, it's in your room. We're be- sure. Our tentacles yeah. that are growing up from your monitor, you're, you can feel the pain. And you won't allow yeah. it because that's hurting yourself. Well, you know, um, Jake, I, I will say, uh, you know, one thing there. You know, I, I actually do believe that the, inv- uh, uh, that the uh, you know, latest Middle East um, sort of invasion, which was, which, as we all know, has been slated for a long time, and yet has been in, mm. postponed and postponed. I think that is in large part um, sort of due to the the power of the internet, mm. and it's sim- it, 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 and it is simply that there are lit- there are honestly, Henry, there are hun- as you know, there are hundreds of thousands of people waiting for this thing to kick off in Tehran. Mm. Yeah. All- all on high alert expecting it. And, you know, now it's, it ain't going to surprise anyone, is it? You know, it's the um, sort of cat out of the bag syndrome. Mm-hmm. And I do think that the power of the internet and the power of people like us talking about Iran, talking about the, uh, uh, of the you know, sort of PNAT, the project for New American Center and so on, has actually, in this case, um, you know, actually done quite a lot of good. Uh, yeah, it's, that's a very interesting point and a, and a very good point. It, it actually seems that. Um, you know, it, because we we hear about doom and gloom all the time, and we hear about you know nukes is going to hit you know the next day or whatever. It's, it's always we're living on that brink of that you yeah. know fear yeah. all the yeah. time, but nothing yeah. big like that is is you know, I mean, is so rarely happens. And and just in the I mean, if you think about the allegedly you know at least the first. World War, I think more people died then. The Second World War, I mean, there are people who have yeah. done, you know, kind of a historical, uh, drawn up historical <laughs> charts on this and, and actually said that even though thi- se- uh, things seem to be really bad right now, things are actually getting better and better all the time, you know. But well, because. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure about that, but go on. Okay, yeah, what I was going to say is just because we have the amount of coverage that we do of events and, yeah. and, and things are actually becoming more global. Whether yeah. we like it or not, because of things of like the internet, of course, but more and more media, more and more TV, more and more information is coming out. That 